We now have a new texturing capability that adds a great deal of realism to RenderWorks, and it's very easy to implement. So let's open file C, which is similar to an earlier file that we used, and this file is already set up with a sheet layer viewport showing a detail of the scene. So let's render an OpenGL, but first let's take a look at the settings to make sure that we can see textures, and then we'll render the scene. Now the grass in the planter is an image-based texture that's been attached or mapped to an extrusion. OpenGL shows this as a flat image, but if we now render the scene in one of the higher quality RenderWorks modes, for example, final quality RenderWorks, we can see that the grassy texture uh, has acquired a three-dimensional aspect. You can see individual blades of grass, they're protruding and they're casting shadows, especially along the edges of the texture where it can be seen against a smooth adjacent surface. It's still a flat extrusion with an image mapped onto it. It's only being represented in a more realistic way. Now this ability for textures to display a three-dimensional aspect is controlled by two settings. One is in the texture settings and the other is by altering the RenderWork settings or simply by selecting a RenderWorks mode that is already set up that way such as Final Quality RenderWorks or the realistic exterior final render work style. So first you edit the texture, but you also need to render it with the appropriate render works settings as well. So let's take a look at the textures settings first. We'll go to the resource browser and right click on the grass texture and then select edit. Now we have the edit texture dialog box open and it is showing four shader families. These are four distinct component types that can be used to make up a texture. And notice that under bump, which is the component that helps provide a three-dimensional aspect to a texture, the selected setting is image. That's because a photo image was used to generate the bump shader. Let's click on the edit button next to it and we'll now see the edit image bump dialog box open up. Now this new three-dimensional appearance that we saw is called displacement mapping. And you can see here that the height has been set to 200 millimeters and the detail to high. Most textures by default have not used this new feature and their displacement mapping settings are set to a height of zero. If we set the height to zero, you'll see that the displacement mapping settings are grayed out. So that means that displacement mapping is not implemented in the texture. In this situation, the shader will rely on the bump strength setting above it to provide some three-dimensional appearance, but it's not as effective generally as the displacement mapping feature. So if you want to take advantage of the more realistic appearance that displacement mapping makes possible, make sure that you enter a height above zero here in the displacement mapping height setting. Now a word of caution, displacement mapping can result in very lengthy rendering times, especially if the detail setting is set to high and the self-shadowing checkbox is selected. So experiment a little bit in a smaller file and see if these features add significantly to the quality we are rendering. In many cases, it's just best to stick with a bump strength setting and ignore displacement mapping altogether. But in other cases, displacement mapping can add just tremendous realism to a scene. Now we make sure that RenderWorks can show displacement mapping. Let's create a new RenderWorks style in the resource browser click on the resources menu button and create a new resource which is a RenderWorks style like this. In the edit RenderWorks style dialog box under the first tab which is options go to textures and select the displacement mapping checkbox and that's all you need to do for this RenderWorks style to show displacement mapping in the renderings. And by the way you can also edit any of the other realistic RenderWorks styles to include displacement mapping and you can also render with final quality render works as well, which is already set up to display it properly. So displacement mapping can provide a more realistic appearance to textures, and you just need to make sure that both the texture and the rendering mode are set up to show this feature. And be aware that rendering times can become lengthy with certain displacement mapping settings, but the quality of the rendering can easily make this worthwhile.